Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Hey, I missed my video yesterday. I apologize. So understand this. Sometimes you might get two videos in a day. I might hit you with three one day. Just depend on what's on my spirit, what's on the docket, what I need to address. And I saw something yesterday that was, it was, showed me um, a lady had gave a man 60,000 no one lady gave a man $200,000 that she met online another lady gave him gave a man some 60,000 or 600,000 or a million that she met online listen y'all got to now nah, now nah, okay Every race and nationality is guilty of this. All right, these two young ladies happen to be of the same race. Okay, not the race that I am of, and they maybe have more expendable income. But I've noticed women of all races and nationalities do this. So this ain't just exclusive to one type of woman. Women from all levels do this. Rich broke middle class lower middle class upper middle class okay lower upper class upper upper class all classes socioeconomic levels women do this and listen y'all got to stop being so desperate for love listen to me understand see men men desperate for this here all right it's what a man wants a woman, a lot of times I notice women desperate for companionship. And it's two different types of desperation that I see in women is, I see the desperation for financial security, that that's the real reason, it's the underlying reason, and then the desperation for companionship. Now, financial security, that's gonna cost you a little bit more, meaning that desperation is what brews up a little bit more of a Jezebel spirit, loose booty 901. Women who really want to be financially secure. They want to live their dreams, have money. They want to be on private jets. They want to be on yachts. They want to have the Louis Vuitton, Cartier. So that's that right there. I see a lot of women doing something strange for a piece of change. And you got to really sit down and identify and get your bag together. Make sure that you're getting your money, that you are working on your brand, you building yourself, that you have your own. Don't get bought by a man. That's one thing that I noticed that a lot of women today trying to do, you're trying to get rescued, trying to get bought by a man. You wanna be sat down. And I done had women tell me, women who make hundreds of thousands a year, Tony, you know, I make, good money but it's tiring i'm tired of hustling i'm tired of having to get up and and just make something happen these entrepreneur type women i want a man who can help me i want a man who could pay my bills who could sit me down so that if i don't want to work i don't have to work i could work freely you know light-hearted without having to be desperate for money and what happens is that that's what lead a lot of women into scamming and doing different scams um it's women out here, it's couples out here scamming people for money, for their little services, whether it's tax company or credit repair, it's couples out here scamming people. Uh-huh, yeah, I done heard about it. And then you got, you know, couples out here scamming people for retreats and, and live events and won't give refunds and all of that. So it, it's it happened. People get money hungry and the same thing happened with single women. Now imagine you do this in a relationship, what you were doing when you single. When you single, you was just as bad, if not worse. And so it's a lot of women who focusing on money and getting in the scams. And then you got men focus on money, getting in the scams, and then guess what? Them women get together. I mean, them, them people get together. Just like we saw the lady from the Atlanta Housewives got with the man who she wanted some financial security she want her some companionship, so she thought, oh, I got two for one. The man, he in the fraud, and then he went to prison. I don't know if he's still in prison, but it's like, how you doing fraud 
on and you on national television. He he was so focused on looking like money and being able to buy this woman because he know this woman ain't one gonna be with no broke man. And I can't remember their name, but if y'all watch the Housewives, y'all remember I just see stuff when it hit the blogs or something. And so this is the thing you have to sit down with yourself and you gotta settle within yourself man you gotta you got to quiet the noise you see what i mean you got to quiet the noise and that body clock that body clock hear that what That's how y'all body clock be sounding. You got to quiet the noise. You you listen to that body clock. You see a man, you ready. Uh, come on, what I got to do? And then I saw a lady comment. She said, Tony, these men today don't want to be held accountable. You call them out and they disappear. Listen, good. That's what you want to happen. Call his butt out. Call him out from the jump. The First time you sent something, call him out. Call him out. If he leave, good. You just save yourself a lifetime of misery. Now you don't have to be a single mom because you call him out and he ghosted you. Good. Casper, bye. Fine. Let it go. Look, you want to run these men off fast as you can because what I noticed is a lot of women afraid to stand their ground afraid to tell a man i'm not comfortable sleeping with you afraid to tell a man i believe in god and i'm gonna serve god afraid to tell a man listen you're not gonna yell at me afraid to tell a man listen i don't think that that is right for you to be liking all of these half naked women pictures afraid to tell a man i'm not comfortable with you going to your ex's house to sit and have an in-house visit for hours on end if you're trying to move on with a new relationship y'all need to meet at the park at a neutral location afraid to tell a man what she really think or feel and then what i'm noticing now is it's two ends of the spectrum and it's the woman who is passive and submissive and afraid to to run a man off to lose a man and then you got the woman over here that is completely fed up and she goes slap crazy and that's all i see i don't see enough in the middle it need now it's some in the middle but it need to be and when i say in the middle i mean center i don't see enough centered people who can express what they want now see this is the thing this is why you people say hos be winning it's it's not a, they're not winning all right really what right now who winning in this relationship who it look like who winning in the world of relationship is men and the reason why it appears that men are winning, meaning that they got to pick up a litter, they could juggle a bunch of women, you know, they could do what they want to do and they get their way. They, they sleep around and then we find the one. It shouldn't, that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. But see, the thing is, is men do what we are allowed to do. That's it. Humans do what we are allowed to do. You know why they got a speed limit? Because if they didn't have a speed limit, people would be driving 95 100 miles an hour to get to their destination with the speed limit i'll be going 75 i'm always going to inch it up to 80. i'm gonna set on cruise control at 80. it's people running me off the road because they going 95 100 i'm like Bruh. i'm like all right i got ticket money but i don't want to mess up my license i don't want my insurance to rise like you ain't got a care in the world what you smoking i'm like what the world are you over there smoking what you drinking right now like why is you going 95 miles an hour 100 miles an hour where is you going sir but humans do what humans allowed to do i remember me and my 
Homeboy was driving to college from Florida to West Virginia. It takes 16 hours to 18 hours if you're driving the speed limit. We got there in 10 hours. I remember looking over when he was driving, he was at 115 mile hour. I ain't care. It ain't bother me because it was a new Gallant, Mitsubishi Gallant. Boy, woo, but them Gallants used to be bad. But hey, we ain't have no Gallant. It was a rental car. And it didn't feel like 115 miles an hour. That's why I try. And now, now mind you now, listen to me. This is why I try to tell women all the time we different. Okay, now as a woman, listen to me now. As a woman at 18, 19 miles an hour. At 18, 19 years old, listen to me. As a woman, are you going to feel comfortable driving 115, 120 miles an hour down the highway on a straight road now for hours on end? Are you going to feel comfortable driving between 90 and 120 for 10 hours straight? That sounds absolutely crazy, right? It is absolutely crazy. I'm 36 now. I know that that is absolutely crazy. Do you know I didn't think nothing was wrong with it? I was having the time of my life. Could have lost my life. We're having the time of my life. Me and my homeboy, both of us going to college. We played football. I was running back. He was an old lineman. We raised in two-parent Christian homes. Two-parent Christian home, raised right. We was not raised by savages. We was not sleeping in the street, sleeping up under the bridge, sleeping in the trap house. No, we both had a mother and a father in the home, and here we are driving to college like we ain't got no sense. That's why I try to tell y'all, you don't know your children. You better make sure you know your children, but you don't know your children. You think you know your children, you don't know your children. You need to spend more time because you're spending more time on housewives than you is with your children you don't know your children you better get to know them here we was i remember we called our mom and daddy when we got up there and i i can't remember my mama or his mom but i think it was his mom what how y'all got that that fast y'all got there too fast you that is too fast that is too fast they from the islands and we were like Ooh, but we made some time, but woo, but we some killer, but woo, well, we felt good. We were like 10 hours. It take from Florida to Atlanta, take six, seven hours from where we at. We got to West Virginia. That's how men think. That's how a lot of men are. That's how men do. That's why when I'm going 80 or 85 it's a man in an f-150 f-250 i don't know why it's always these kind of trucks now now sometimes them little cars with the loud mufflers but it's always men flying past every now and then it'll be a woman but typically it's men 95 huh where you going bro where's you going ain't no woman in the car so her water ain't break so where are you going but that's how we think and then what 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 women say what y'all want to do this what y'all want to hear what women want to hear is me come on here and say, listen, men, you need to get it together. As a man, you need to grow up. You need to man up. You need to zip your pants and you need to keep your thing in your pants until you marry. And when you meet a woman, you need to tell her the exact plans that you have for her. You need to tell her exactly what you plan to do with her and for her in her life. And you need to show up and you need to be a man. You need to break bread. You need to be opening doors, pulling out chairs. You need to be paying for dates. You need to be courting her. And do not ask to sleep with her. And if she offered to sleep with you, turn it down and wait until marriage until you sleep with her. And then you get on one knee. You will get engaged. You plan As soon as you get engaged the next day you need to pick a date for the wedding with her and you need to turn it over to her you need to raise the money get the money borrow the money do what you need to do for the money to give her a budget for that wedding and you need to get that wedding have that wedding right out that wedding you need to take her anywhere in the world that she want to go for seven nights for a honeymoon and when you get back you need to go to your bank credit union navy federal and you need to sit down and you need to get a home loan on the house of her dreams. And then after you get that home loan and they done going through your credit and your bank statements, you need to go to the dealer and you need to get her the car of her dreams. 
And then y'all need to plan when you finna have kids. And then you need to sit down and find out when she ovulating, get the app for it. Look at when she ovulating, when she ovulating, you need to get on a bike, put her legs up, okay? You need to put an ankle behind the ear and get her pregnant. And then on the day that she wanna have that child, you need to make sure that water break. And if you got the scale and she holler, break that water, get her to that hospital and have a baby. She need to have a midwife, she need to have a doula, she need to have the, the tub with the water in it if that's what she want. Do give her what she need, okay? And then you let her sit down for the next two to three years. I don't care how much she make, what she doing, you need to make up for her income, however you got to do it. You need to work 24 hours a day, do what you need to do. You see, you see how I just said? That's literally what women be asking me to tell men. That's literally what a lot of women wanna hear a man tell a man but listen to me listen to me do you have your do you have a son he barely listened to you listen to me do you have a daddy yes you have a daddy did you see your dad interact with your mom your daddy didn't listen to your mom listen to me do your daddy got a mama? Yes, he do. Your daddy didn't listen to his mama. Do you got a brother? How well did you see your brother listen to y'all parents? Do you got a male cousin? How well did you see your male cousin listen to his parents? Do you got an uncle? How well did you see your uncle listen to your grandma? So now let me ask you this. So now, if you seen your uncle, your daddy, your brother, your son, your male cousin, your boyfriend, you have you ever had a boyfriend? What about a husband? How well did he listen to his mama? Was he raised with his mama? Okay. Was his mama addict? Was all your boyfriend's mamas addicts? Okay, did any of them cheat on you? Oh, all of them cheated? So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay, let me ask you this. So, if all the men you know in your life barely listen to the people that they knew all their life, loved them, cared for them, would kill for them, let me ask you this. What make you think that a man gonna go to YouTube and search for my video to let me tell him what to do with his life okay uh, what make you think that I just want to know what make you think that a man gonna listen to me see I'm a man that's why I don't waste my time that's why I do I, I got videos on here for men now but honestly I'm doing it just be for all of the loud women in the comments that just oh you need to talk to the men you need to talk to the men but i know men listen this is what i try to tell y'all listen that's why this is called this that's why i titled this book i titled the book okay listen this table of contents this table of contents Number one, a man's world, okay? Chapter two, know your worth. Power versus influence. The grown boy syndrome. The poker face. The 72 hour rule. Break up to make up. Show, don't tell. The rules of engagement. Let him love you. When we play mind games, everyone loses. Complacency is the enemy. Just say no. Honor and respect. Trust and freedom. Sex is a plus. You're not a maid. Silence is golden. Don't 
compete. A woman's influence. That's that's the, that right there is the table of contents. Okay. Mm. I wrote the table of contents. You know why I titled it a woman's influence? Because that's what's going to change a man's life. Not a man. A man could have a daddy. He gonna listen to his daddy. He gonna remember what his daddy say. But his daddy could talk to he blue in the face. If he meet a woman, and that woman gonna, uh, you hear me? Uh, he finna shoo, shoo, swan dive right in it. You hear me? He finna swan dive. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at the Holy Bible. Read the Holy Bible. Okay. Read the Holy Bible. When you read the Holy Bible, you're going to see who God used to get a message to a man. When he when Jesus needed to come in the world, he went to Mary. He didn't go to Joseph and ask Joseph for permission. Hey, Joseph, is it all right with you if I use your wife to bear the Son of Man? To bring Jesus Christ into the world, the Messiah into the world. Is it all right with you, Joseph? Because you the head. So I'm gonna check with you. No, God went to the woman. Told her, look, look, this right, right here finna go down. Then went to Joseph. Hey, calm down, Playboy. She did not cheat on you. Calm down, Playboy. She did not cheat on you. Okay. Um, God, this what I this what I do. All right. You feeling froggy leap. All right, you won't leap again. Calm down. So Joseph was like, all right. Can't beat that, all right. My, my darn wife, baby daddy is God. What the world I'm gonna do? So Joseph was like, all right, a woman's influence. You got all the power. When God needed to get the message, you know, he told um, Abraham that he was gonna have a son. Sarah laughed. She was like, what the world? The woman was harder to reach right then than the man. When the devil wanted to get to Adam, who he went to? He didn't go to uh, he he didn't go to Adam. The devil ain't go to Adam. He went to Eve. That's what it paint. That's what the picture paint. The reason why is letting you know then Eve said, hey, listen, what a hey, what an apple good? Nah, hey, you better hit this. Fine, we don't even know if it was an apple. It could have been a thumbquat. Well, you know, it could have been a great, you know, but he went to E. When the, when they needed to get Samson, what who they sent in there? Delilah. When when the adversary needed to let God know that David ain't the apple of your eye, what he did? Tempting him with Bathsheba. Just put a little bug in his ear. Hey, get up and go to the window. He don't even know why he was at the window. It was so hot out there. He's standing there in front of that one of sweating. Looked out there. Saw them hams. Bent over. Saw that late water running down. Saw that hell laid, slayed back on that bike with that water. And that water slipped on down. Shoo, right through that bike side. David lost his mind. Bathsheba was taking a bath. David lost his mind. Hey. Come here. Hey. You rise, put him on the front line in the, in the battle. He's, a, he's an amazing warrior. Put him on the front line. We need him. We need him. He's amazing. David had that woman husband killed. Why? For a woman. It's like, bro, you can have it, all these women out here. All these women out here. David, bro, boy, you could have sat down with you rise. And you rise could have been like, <laughs> hey, come on, bro. Like, if you want her, if you want her that bad, hey, give me a thousand pieces of gold now. Nah. Give me a thousand pieces of gold. Hey, we can work this out now. Nah. Because that's how men are. Men don't be tied to nothing. Men don't be tied to nothing. That men are not tied to nothing. That's how you y'all ask all the time, Tony. How do you men walk out on their kids? 
because a man's heart is conditioned differently because this same man got to hunt and kill live beings hunting them killing them, skinning them for dinner then he got to go to war and cut off heads blow heads off shoulders so god knew what he was creating when he created a man but he knew that I need something that's going to slow this man down. I need something that's going to soften his heart. Ain't nothing going to get to this man. It's one thing that could get to this man, and that's a woman. And what women got to understand is you got all the power. But the thing about it is men know that you don't know your power. See, a lot of the women who know their power, they use it for evil. And they find their power because they've been taken advantage of for so long. They've been done wrong for so long that they say, you know what? I'm fed up. I'm tired. I'm about to fight back. And they fight back with, with violence and vengeance and evilness. And they become a Jezebel spirit. They become a savage hearted woman. When had she knew better, had she been told better, she could have stated exactly who she is and what she want. Cool, calm, and collected. And that man would have put up or shut up. That man would have stepped up in her life or he would have stepped out of her life, stepped on up out of her life. She wouldn't have had to break a sweat, wouldn't have had to shed a tear, wouldn't have had to raise a voice, Would have, could have just, uh, just stated exactly what she want without getting loud and crazy. I see a lot of women that they get loud and crazy and feisty because they feel like that's the energy they got to bring. In order for a man to listen. Listen to me. That man not listening to you. That man. You not scaring that man. You doing all that screaming and hollering and yelling and crying and cussing and fussing and throwing stuff. You not scaring him. What you got to understand. This man is wired to kill. What do you think gladiators used to do? Any man could have got in there. In that circle. Look at what you see boxers doing. Look at what you see MMA fighters doing. That's how men wired. So you screaming and hollering and yelling and cussing. Throwing stuff. Grabbing a knife. You're not scaring him. You're not scaring him. You know what scare a man? When you look him in the eyes just like this in the same tone. And say listen. If you ever try me. You'll never see me again. Play with it. That's what scale man. And then when he take and try you a little bit. He'll try you a little bit. Now he know when you said you try me. He know you talking about cheating. Or beating. So he'll try you a little bit. Just to see if you really bought that life. He gonna test you now. That's men. That's men. Why you think these men go on the highway. Get on the highway. Get on the highway, go to speed limit. Pay attention to who fly by you. Count how many men and how many women fly by you. You're going to count more men. You're going to count more men. You know why? Because we ignorant. Men are ignorant. It's just what it is. It's like we wise, but we dumb. It's like we know a whole lot and we know so little. That's just how men are. I, I'm confounded. I'm confused by the creation of man. I'm a man. And I don't understand why men do it, do what we do. It don't make no sense to me. Like, I'm, bro, how do you got six baby mamas? Bro, at, at any point in here, did you get an itch or a burn? At any point in here, did something say to you, I can't take care of all these kids? Is, was it any point in here that it just dawned on you that a condom costs a dollar? Did it cost 75 cents out of CVS bathroom? Did it, it, did it dawn on you at any time that the child support courts do not play? Did it dawn on you? It, like a lot of things men do, I don't understand. Like, bro, how can you walk out on your child, not call your son, your daughter? How can you cuss out your child, mama? Cuss out like a dog, spit in her face, talk to her like trash, and it's the same woman that you was dipping your dirty D in unprotected. But now she trash. I don't understand. I don't understand it. 
Let so I'm trying to tell y'all what the, this quote that say the future is female, and now women get mad about the term female. I'm like, oh lord. A lady literally wrote me and say, do not say female. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, you got to come and you got to do something with these men because these women so hurt. They don't even want to be called female. I said, it's a male and it's a female. It's a man and it's a woman. It's a boy and it's a girl. Like, female is not a derogatory term. But some women feel that it is. So I'm guessing male is a derogatory term as well. And I said, Lord, something got to give. Something got to give. Because it's so much hurt and pain. But listen, you got to you have to protect yourself. Nobody coming to save you. Nobody coming to rescue you. Look, a man, a man has to be solid with God. That's the, that's the only hope for you to get half good in a man is that he knows God. So where you need to be is where God is. Where God at? Where's where's God? He might be in Starbucks. Okay, he might he God might be more in Starbucks than in your church that you're going to. If you know it's a whole lot of sin in there and your pastor ain't living right, you know your pastor is trying to commit tax fraud in the city of Atlanta and trying to do tax fraud, trying to hide money and taking the money for the nonprofit, buying Gucci and Louis and overpaying themselves. You know your pastor doing that. Instead of having a salary, a legitimate salary that's reported to the government through the nonprofit, you could get paid through a nonprofit. Nonprofit don't mean you can't get paid, but you know your pastor ain't living right. You need to get on up out of the church because the oil flow from the head. Everything flow from the head. The curses, the wrath of God, the sin, everything gonna flow from the head. The good, bad, and the ugly. You know your pastor and first lady ain't doing right. You need to get on get on up out of there. And especially if three, four witnesses done told you that. Now one person said, okay, that could be a Jezebel spirit. In a male or a female. Two, three people go to saying it. Alright, got to get got to go. But you need to look at this man. How much does this man, how much does his temperament remind you of Jesus? How much does his temperament remind you of righteousness? Now, I've been coaching some Muslims. There's some Muslims that follow me on here. So, and they invert this information. It's been crazy to me to see how Christians could be so, and I'm a Christian, how Christians could be so judgmental and so combative and so hypocritical and want to argue over the letter of the law and ain't never got better than a C in, in reading and comprehension class, but want to pretend to be able to interpret and un fully understand the Holy Bible that was translated from another language that they've never heard of and 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 reading the Bible, King James Version, barely got through English class. Had to beg for a B. Had to beg for a B in the reading and comprehension. And now all of a sudden a Bible scholar understand every caveat and nuance of the Holy Bible and want to argue with other Christians. I be on here talking and it's like, you get what I'm saying. I'm talking off the dome. I'm coming off the top of my head. So I might misspeak. I ain't reading a teleprompter. It'll be Christians in the comments want to argue about the scriptures. Video ain't even about that. But then here there are Muslims hiring me from around the world. Other parts of the world hiring me and they say, Tony, I know you're a Christian. But what you're teaching on about saving yourself until marriage, I relate to it. That's in my religion as well. And I understand that we, you know, we both believe in God and we both believe in living right and being a decent human being. I understand where you're coming from and I respect your message. I'm like, ain't that something? I said, Lord, trying to show me something. How in the world Christians want to argue you to death? And here it is somebody of a whole nother religion 
understand me. But see, now nah, I forgot where I was going, but I need to put that right there. I need to put that right there. But this is what I want you to do. Oh, I said that because now the Muslim, she might say, well, how much do he remind me of Allah or Prophet Muhammad? You know, that's, that's you know, that's what y'all do, all right? But what I'm talking about, I'm a Christian. So I say, listen, when you look at this man, and see, the, under, the in order to understand the attributes of, of Christ, you have to read the Holy Bible. If you can't read the Holy Bible, you got to listen to the Holy Bible. If you can't listen, then, all right, it'll be in sign language somewhere. and Or you'll read lips. And somebody, can, somebody who you know and love can explain it to you. Because, see, some people cannot read they didn't they didn't go to school they cannot read somebody can teach it to you but it got to be somebody you know and love and trust and and you can hear it from a few different people i know adults who can't read and that's why i try to tell people all the time it ain't just about the letter of the law it's also about the spirit of god that's why the bible says serve god in spirit and in truth because a lot of people in the days that the bible was written couldn't read you see what i mean so you got to serve god in spirit and in truth and God going to call leaders. He going to call prophets. He going to call teachers. He going to call apostles. He going to call people that when you look at their life and you feel their spirit, you're going to feel a purity. You're going to feel a purity. Now, when somebody, when you look at somebody and, and you know that you're not scorned. So like it's people who have judged me and called me a charlatan or a scam or all of this right here. But their heart is hurt from somebody that hurt them. It ain't, I ain't never met a person who got a pure heart, who healing, actively healing, working on their healing to call me a scam. I ain't never heard that. I hear that from the people with the fake pictures, the people who is not even real person, or it's a woman and then in her bio, it got all these terms that she call herself, all this stuff. She studied the stars or she studied this kind of this. She a master of this, master of that. Basically, I sum it up to somebody who has been turned over to a reprobate mind. But I ain't never seen nobody with good sense, common sense, or respectable, you know, carrying themselves right. Look me in my eyes or write me and say, Tony, you strike me as a scam. You strike me as a scam. And so what happens is you try the spirit by the spirit. You're going to know the tree by its fruit. You're going to know the tree by its fruit. So when you see this person, you got to, when you see this man, you have to, when you talking to him, you listen to him, you dating him, you, you going out with him, you got to ask yourself, how much does his spirit resemble the spirit of Christ, resemble the spirit of God? And so, and in order to know that, you got to understand the attributes of God and you know that by studying the word. So when you study the word, you're going to read things like be slow to anger. You're going to read things like don't covet. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. You're going to read things like if you lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. You're going to read things that tell you fornication is a sin. Adultery is a sin. You're going to read these things that said love your neighbor as you love yourself. So. You're going to read things that say, like, if somebody asks you for your shirt, give them your coat, too. If somebody asks you to go a mile, go two miles with them. Somebody do you wrong, turn the other cheek. You're going to read these things. So now what you got to do is you got to watch this man. Okay, you got to watch this man and you got to see how he move. You got to watch how he move. So one thing I noticed, you know, I noticed that there's a lot of people who talk down to customer service. I see it because I see all my customer service emails. Some some, some of y'all women come in there. It's only been a couple men. It's typically women because my audience is 95% women and on, on YouTube at least. It's 80% every other social media. But some women come into the customer service and talk to my customer service people, my virtual assistant, like trash. Blame them lie on them, put words in their mouth. A lot of times they talking to me and don't even know it. And and I, I'm going to tell y'all this. When y'all have an issue with my customer service, like the customer service 
felt it was a little rude to you, it was me. I'm going to go admit to it now. If you ever felt like customer service was rude, it was me. It was me. You, yeah. Cause and that's why the the CEO is not supposed to be doing all of the customer service email. Cause once you hit a certain level of success, you hit a certain level of income, your patients be different. And I get in a couple. Oh, oh. Who the world are you talking to? And why? Why be reading left to right? So if y'all ever had my cousin serve get a little rude, it was me. Cause you got out of pocket. You got out of line. But that's what I see. So I noticed that. I noticed a lot of people, they talk down to customer service or to a waiter. And I s I done seen it in a lot of people. I, I done seen it in a lot of people, okay? I ain't gonna say name, but I'm talking about people right around me. All right, people, my family. And I just would be like. I didn't understand that, you know, because I, I, I want to emulate Christ. I want to show love. So so when I talk to the, the, the waiter, I'm like, hey, yeah, so, um, and I'm looking them in the eyes. Hey, yeah, so uh, question for you. So tell me about this. Now, now, what do you like between this and this? What would you recommend? Oh, okay. All, all right. Cool. All right. All right. I'm going I'm, I'm to try that. You know, I'm, I'm going to have that. And then every time they come, they bring a water. They bring another refill another, every time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All night long. Thank you. End of the night, I tip 25% now. Nah. Okay. I couldn't always tip 25%, but now that I'm able to tip 25%, I tip 25%. And a lot of people trying to get away with 15%, 10%. When I do takeout, I read that there's nothing wrong not to tip on takeout. I tip ten percent on takeout in 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 the situation we in and I'm handing it. I tip twenty percent on takeout. Why? Because this ain't about me and this me and this business. It's about me and God. If I want to see them win, God gonna make sure make sure to it that I win. So when you meet the hill man, this the number one thing. This the number one thing. How much does he resemble? The spirit of God. So you watch the way he talked to a waiter when y'all go on a date. Watch the way he handled road raid. See, a uh, road raid? Nah. Okay. When I was in college, I used to pull that thing on you. You cut me, you cut me off, I'm putting that thing in your face. You hear me? It was a BB gun. So I would have had a world of problems if somebody would have pulled a real gun and shot because I'd have been <laughs> shooting BB back. But I just put that thing on you, boy. Woo! How called scared. They scared, scared. Black man pulled a gun on him. Absolutely did. It was a BB gun. But that's where I used to be with it, with road rage. Pull right up beside and let that one down. Mean mother. If Lux could kill, they were dead then. They were dead then. That's how I used to be. Now, nah, road rage. Let me tell you how I do road rage now. Nah. Road rage. I be driving. Somebody cut my off. <laughs> boy, I can't believe this here, boy. Woo. Boy, what the real wrong with that woman, boy? <sighs> yeah, you cut my off. All right. Yeah, go on. All right. That's how I do road rage now. I probably, I probably, I probably done hit the horn two times in the last few years. See what I'm saying? The Bible say be slow to anger. So I'm sharing this with you. And, and the way I treat my wife, now listen, now Ephesians 5, it say, Ephesians 5, it say, husband love your wives as Christ loved the church. So my wife got everything. I it say present her blemish and spot free. My my wife, I I, I go broke for my wife. You know why? Because Christ went broke for me. When, when he got on that cross, that was going broke. That was giving everything. So I give everything for my wife. We, we moved my mother-in-law into a new apartment. And we paying the rent. You know, the rent is $1,600 a month. We put my put my mom in a, in a new place. Her rent $1,800 a month. We, we paying that. We paying that. And that, because that's our parents. 
and they're not in a position to earn the kind of money to put them where they need to be. So, you know, that's three, four thousand dollars a month that we committing to. And I told my wife, I say, do the math on that now. They live another 30 years. What's 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 30 years? 12 months a year. Times 4,000. But the Bible says, honor thy mother and father, and your days will be long upon this earth. So what's the opposite? Your days going to be short. Now, honor don't mean pay for. We doing that because we able to do that. Honor mean respect. Honor mean to uplift, uphold, you respect. So you ain't cursing them out. You ain't going off. Now, you might get distance. You might not talk to your mama for a while because of her spirit, negative. You're not dishonoring her by getting distance. So, so we'll do another video on that. But you honor them. So I told, and see, look, this from me as a man. I said, baby, I got to get my mama in a new place. I just want her to be comfortable. I want her to be safe. I'm going to get her in a new place. You know, we ain't got to, she own a house. We ain't got to buy a house, but it's, but it's, it's in a, you know, ran down neighborhood. It's from my grandma, from my grandma. So I said, let me put it in a gated neighborhood, nice house. We ain't got to buy the house. We can rent the house because she might want to move. But I just want to be comfortable. And hey, let's get your mama in a new place. And let's get my mama a new car. Let's get your mama a new car. All right. Let's, let, let's get my daddy a car. My, my, my wife, daddy, he good. You know, he, he good. But our other three parents, they not as good. So I said that. Why? Because I believe in honoring the mother and father. They ain't always right. They ain't always nice. But I don't, I don't never raise my voice. I don't cuss them out. I may have to get distance. So this is what I'm saying. When you're looking at this man, you got to see. And, and, and you got to understand that honor don't mean a mama's boy now. Honor don't mean he don't understand that a husband will cleave to his wife. All right? So you got to understand it's a balance. He got to have balance. But that's what his spirituality, that's where his relationship with God comes in. So when you look at this, that's how you can tell if he's the one. That's how you know if he's the one by how he move. And then this is the thing. You got to be consistent. See, God is constant. God never changes. He's not a man that he should lie. So when a man is following God, he's going to be consistent. He's going to be consistent. And see, now I handle problems different. I used to go off. I used to raise my voice. I used to yell. When I'm dealing with customer service, I get mad. Now, I keep it cool, calm, and collector. I keep it cool, calm, and collector. I, I, I needed to break my lease. I needed to break my lease on, on my downtown because it's you can't go down there. They, 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 they got COVID in the building every day. And I got my son got asthma. So I'm, I'm dumping $3,000 a month. I need to break that lease. They tried to tell me, no, you ain't going to be able to break that lease. I'm like, <laughs> okay, all right, we'll know who we talking to. Okay, now I used to go off. I used to get on that phone. You finna hear me. I'm finna be loud. I'm finna be firm. You hear me, angry, black man. Hey, call, I'll be that. I used to be that. I sat down, cool, calm, and collected. I wrote an email. I read that email to my daddy. When I read that email to my daddy, I didn't know who wrote that. It was like the Spirit of God came and put Johnny Cochran in me. But when I tell you I sounded like a lawyer, you hear me? That lady had to take some time. She had to take some time. That lady went and talked to her bosses. She came back. She said, Mr. Gaston, we finna let you out this lease. You not responsible for the rest of the months that you owe. We finna let you out this lease. You know why? Cool, calm, and collected. Had I went off the hen flying, yelling, cussing, I don't curse, but had I got irate, all that, she probably would have made it her business to make me look like an angry black man to, to the company so that they would be willing to spend money to take me to court but because i read her i read her but in email cool calm and collected whew, you see what i mean so i'm taking you through examples of how god changed my life of how challenging the spirit of god 
and stand near to the cross, being in a place to where I'm trying to move like, think like, be like Christ. See, I used to want to be like Mike, Michael Jordan. Used to want to be like Mike. Now I want to be like Christ. So you, when you meet this man, you need to see that his spirit, his temperament, if he if he talking down to the to the waitress or the waiter, got to go. He's not the one. You'll pick that up on the first date. Okay, if he yelling and cussing at customer service and and he the one swipe the card, but trying to get loud and lie by those fraudulent charge and you so you watched him swipe the card. You got to run. You going you going to pick that up. If he disrespect his mama, even if she's an addict, even if she abandoned him, if he has not healed as a man, guess what? He finna hurt you. So if he disrespecting his mama, now if he kissing his mama behind, meaning he let her run his life and you see she got a Jezebel spirit or she got a controlling spirit, manipulative spirit, and he cannot be man enough to stand his strength. So like I take care of my mama. You see what I mean? I, I got my mama in a nice gated neighborhood in a house. Because the city she live in is different. It's it's not the same. So where we live in, a house in a gated neighborhood would be three times that. So it's a little different. And our apartment's nicer here too. And and my mama, she, she always keep her other three grandkids. You know, so it's a little different situation for my mama and my wife's mama because they're in different cities, d different setups. I take care of my mama, okay? I bought my mama a brand new 2020 car. And I and but she worked with the group home, so I bought her a work car. So my mom, I bought my mama two cars. She got two cars, and she got a place to live. I pay the rent, I pay the lights, water, all of that. We pay that. And so, but guess what? My mama don't call no shots over here. My mama don't tell me what to do, nothing to do about my household. My mama know my wife come first. My mama know that if my wife ain't with it, it ain't it ain't gonna fly. But she know I married right. So if my heart say I want to do something, my wife not going to tell me no. If my heart all the way in it. Unless it's a dumb decision. And so my mama know that. So my mama don't come telling me what to do for with my wife. And what to do with my household. And in the past when she tried it. Got put right to the place. Respectfully. Honorably. I honorably put a. Right in her place. Mama, listen. Remember the Bible says a husband will forsake his mother and father and cleave to his wife. Okay? Listen to me. I know who I married. I ain't dumb. All right? Respect my wife. You and my sister. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. If y'all think by saying anything negative about my wife, if you dream it, wake up and ask God for forgiveness. Because I know who I married. And I know... Her good and her bad. I know she ain't perfect. Y'all ain't either. But listen to me. I married her. Ain't gonna be no ill speaking of her from nobody. I let all of them know that. There don't none of them. Hey, you 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 ready to get mad because something ain't buy you, some money ain't get you, and you wanna put it on my wife? It ain't got nothing to do with my wife. My wife wanna help y'all. Try to help y'all. It ain't got nothing to do with this. Is what I don't wanna do. I don't want to give you the money. It ain't got nothing to do with my wife. So I had to check them, put them in play. You see what I mean? So in every aspect, you're going to see it's balance. I honor my mother, but I also understand that my marriage comes first. So my mama don't run nothing over here in my household. God the head of my household, not my parents. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm an adult. I'm responsible for me now. Me and God. And so when you dealing with this man, it ain't got to be, it ain't all or nothing. You're going to see a spiritual balance. You're going to see a spiritual maturity and see God going to rectify and he's going to reckon in every aspect of this man's life. He's going to fix him. So with his attitude, with his finance, see, God say the borrower is servant to the lender. So as, as I'm spiritually maturing, let me pay out these student loans, let me pay out these credit cards. Pay credit card down to zero. You see what I mean? 
because the borrower is servant to the lender. So if a man is crazy about debt and he crazy stuck in debt, now you always gonna have debt. You you always gonna have debt because you advancing your life and you you it's better to finance somebody else's money than to and and put your money to work, be investing in yourself, flipping your money. You you becoming building your business, building your brand. You gonna make more money. Your return on your investment. When I invest in me, my return on my investment is like a thousand percent. So if I got a loan that's four percent, five percent, I'm good. I'm to the good. You see what I mean? That's how I think. So they in business. Let them do business. They do loans. Let them do loans. But you ain't trying to just be stuck as a slave to the loan. You trying to get out of loan. So when you see this man, if he live in an apartment, he got an apartment, apartment eight fifty a month, but then he driving a G wagon, G wagon costing him three thousand a month. Oh, all right, got got to go, got to go. He upside down, he upside down, cause he he trying to look good for out there, and then he coming and sleeping next to the rats and cheese in his apartment, versus toning that down a little bit, getting a better, safer place to live, and then you know still a nice car so you see this man he all the way flipped upside down in debt he ain't about credit score because credit score you could be late on two payments and your credit score look like you were raised with the wolves but it ain't about credit score it's how he managed his money that's a number that's a number and it's so much that go into that how he managed his money you pay attention to that because see the bible teaches us to be a good steward of our money the bible teaches you to be slow to anger the Bible teaches you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The Bible tells you that God has no respect of person. The priest or the pomper, the, 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 the peasant or the king, God see them the same. See them the same and treat them the same. So listen, if if you meet a man and he sniff booty of a celebrity or he sniff booty of somebody that got money and then you see him talking to a waiter and he talked to the waiter like he better than the waiter, you got to run. He ain't ready. He ain't ready. See, see, and this is what y'all need to understand. It's, some, it's, it's, it's two or three women that get this on here. Not literally, but this is what y'all got to understand. A lot of times women be asking me, Tony, talk to the men, talk to the men, talk to the men. What you don't understand, if you change the way you listen to this and you stop getting offense, offended, if you stop feeling attacked, and you listen to what I'm saying, you will hear that this video is also for the men. Because this man is watching this, the man who being knows it, he, he trying to learn, he trying to grow. In this video, he just learned that if he quit the anger, that if he bad with his money, that if he don't love his neighbor as he loves himself, if he don't honor his parents, he just learned that he's not a man. You see what I'm saying? I just taught him that without having to talk directly to him. See, that's how men learn. And now he's sitting there like, hey, he right, well, hey, he right, cause, cause if he was talking to me, well, I'd have felt so attacked, I wouldn't listen to nothing. And that's what happened with a lot of time with with the women as well. You're feel, you feeling attacked, you feeling attacked, so so you shut down. And instead of getting the message and letting it do for you what it need to do, you feel attacked because it's stepping on your toes. And so you say, ah, right, talk to the man. You need to talk to the man. It's a lot of people talking to the women. You need to talk to the men. Lady told me yesterday, Tony, I love, 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 love your video, but it's it's just saddens me that that's how you think women sound. <laughs> Ma'am, listen to me, okay? I deal with 10 million women a month. You hear me? My message is reaching 10 million people a week. When I say this is how women sound, this is how they sound to me. I done toured the whole world. I done toured the world doing love and relationship seminar. When when them women get stand up to talk and they fed up and they got this question, that's how they sound. That's how they sound. I, of course, I'm not Eddie Murphy or Jamie Foxx to know how to change my voice to the exact tenor and tone. So forgive me for being an octave off. But that's how they sound like. Oh, Tony. You need to talk to the man because what I've been noticing is that it's a lot of people popping up talking to women, but who is talking to the men? What you got to realize is the men who talking to women, we understand because we men, we understand how men learn. So we understand men going to watch this, but they're going to learn backhanded. 
because they know the man that I'm preparing you for, he know he not that man. Hey, I got to go. God bless you.